Today we're going to talk about the most famous problem in game theory, the prisoner's dilemma. You and your partner in crime are apprehended, but you're not too worried because the police don't have much evidence on you. A clever cop tries to come up with a way to get you to talk. He explains that if both of you stay silent, then each of you will serve one year in jail. But he offers you a deal. If one of you confesses, then that person gets to go home free, and the person who stays silent gets four years as punishment. However, if both people confess, then each will have to serve your dues to society and serve two years in jail each. The cop leaves and separates you and your partner, so you're left wondering what to do. You think that the best solution is if you can trust your partner, you should stay silent. That way you each get one year in jail, and that's the best outcome for the group. But you worry what happens if you stay silent and your partner confesses. Then you're going to get four years in jail, and that doesn't sound too good. So you need to think about this more logically. What you do is you imagine your decision relative to your partner's decision. Let's say that your partner confesses. You can either make the choice of staying silent or you can confess as well. If you stay silent, then you'll serve four years in jail. If you confess, however, you'll only have to serve two years. So if your partner confesses, it's in your interest to confess as well. What happens if your partner stays silent? Well, in that case, if you stay silent, you'll serve one year in jail. But if you confess, you'll go completely free. So if your partner stays silent, it's also in your interest to confess. You come across a startling realization that no matter what your partner does, it's always better for you to confess. This is known as a dominant strategy, and in game theory, when you have a dominant strategy, you should play it. So you find the cop and you hurriedly run over and explain to him that you confess. The cop explains that you're going to serve two years because your partner confessed as well. How did that happen? Well just as you were thinking about the problem, so was your partner. He was wondering about his actions relative to your decision. He thought what would happen if you confess and he had the choices between staying silent and confessing. He realized that it was better for him to confess if you confess. Now if you stay silent, he again realized that it's in his interest to confess. So he has a dominant strategy which is to confess. So far we've been thinking about the game from one person's perspective at a time. But truly we should be thinking about it together as a whole when both people are making the decision. They each have the choice to stay silent or confess and that affects the outcome for each person in the group. They can both stay silent, one person can stay silent while the other confesses, or they can both confess. Now, it seems best for the group if they could both stay silent. They'll only serve one year in jail, and that's the best that they could do as a whole. But as we showed earlier, it's better for you to confess no matter what your partner does, and it's better for your partner to confess no matter what you do. Therefore, both of you will end up confessing to the crime and serving two years. This is the best individual outcome that you can do if you can't trust your partner and you have to make the best decision for yourself. This situation is known as a Nash equilibrium, and this is the crux of the prisoner's dilemma, that this is a worse outcome for everyone. So the prisoner's dilemma is a conflict between choosing what's best for you individually and choosing what's best for the group as a whole. And these two things are not equal. While you would like to do the best thing for the group, you can't trust that other people will also cooperate and do the best thing for society. So you have to do what's best for you individually and that ends up worse for everyone. The prisoner's dilemma comes up time and again in our daily lives when you ask your friends to volunteer for help, when you're driving and wondering whether to speed, or when you're trying to save the environment and asking others to be green as well. Obviously we do win some of these games and we can find the best overall outcome for the group. 
This is a brief introduction to game three, and you have to learn that there are ways to build trust and overcome the prisoner's dilemma. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I make videos on math and game theory. You can also check me out on my blog, Mind Your Decisions. I have weekly puzzles on Monday and game theory posts on Tuesday. And you can check me out on Twitter at Presh Talwalker. Thanks.